scramblers were the OG adventure bikes. Britishers took roadsters and made them dirt ready and went scrambling. And true to its British roots, Triumph has done the same with the Scrambler 400X. It has taken the Speed 400 and made it more intentful and rugged. So the seemingly simple question that needs answering is that, is this Scrambler the right adventure motorcycle for your garage? Triumph and Bajaj did set out to create this new platform, the intention was to use the majority of the same parts across the board, with few minor tweaks to suit each bike's intention. Hence, you will find the same chassis, same subframe, same fuel tank, lighting elements and the same engine here on the Scrambler as you do on the Speed. But everything here is a bit more curated to take on harsher terrain. For starters, the headlight gets this protective grille. The tank gets these rubberized grips. It gets split seats with this lovely ribbed texture. The chassis has been beefed up to make it go rough-roading. This too gets a side number plate just like the scrambler racers of the past. Now this aluminum bash plate is standard so that you don't end up scraping this engine's belly. And as a whole you're getting a motorcycle that feels and looks a lot more substantial and solid. The speed does look beautiful, but this definitely has the meaty presence that you associate with scramblers. And premium quality levels are still maintained with this bike. And this sort of macho feeling is exemplified the moment you hop on to the bike. Longer travel suspension at both ends, a larger front wheel and changes to the chassis make for an intentful and commanding riding stance. The controls, well, they are neatly positioned on this wide steel handlebar and there is ample leverage on offer to flick this scrambler from one side to the other very, very quickly. And because I can remove the rubber inserts from these clawed foot pegs in a jiffy, there is adequate traction provided when you're going dirty dancing. Now the seat height, well, the numbers might suggest it's a bit on the taller side and shorter riders might be a bit hesitant. But there's not need to worry because it doesn't translate as much into the real world because the midsection of the bike is slim and if you pick up a few skills along the way, it shouldn't be daunting at all. Plus, for taller riders who are feeling a bit cramped on the speed, well, you'll feel this posture to be a lot more accommodating and natural. Despite this being a short 250 km ride, I wasn't feeling any bum soreness as I did with the Speed 400. The extra padding and roomier seat does a fine job of keeping you settled in the saddle. And thanks to the tank grips, you can straddle the bike well and not slide back and forth continuously. The new 398cc single cylinder motor puts out the same 39.5 bhp and 37.5 newton meters. It has to lug around a bit more weight here, 9 kilos to be more precise. Hence, in order to keep the engine just as lively, Triumph has played around with the sprockets, lowering one tooth at the engine side. As a result, it should technically be just as peppy. But is it? Not exactly though, the extra heft does come into play here as the scrambler builds up speed in a rather controlled manner. It isn't boring or flat, but just not that thrilling. It is capable of riding fast, but it does so in a rather controlled manner, which is fairly good for riders of all skill levels. What you will be more delighted though by, especially if you're a tourer, is just how effortlessly the motor can sit at speeds of 100, 110 kmph out on the highway. There are barely any vibes to speak about, although when you're rolling through the gears, you might feel that the engine is a bit on the gruff side. That could possibly be a hindrance 
out in the city, but we'll test that once we get this bike for a thorough road test. So as far as versatility goes, this bike definitely scores higher than its Roadster sibling. Even though it is heavier, Triumph claims the fuel efficiency of the Scrambler 400X is just 1 kmpl less than the speed at 28 kmpl. We will be finding out exactly how much it does when you get it for a proper road test, but we managed to do around 250 kilometers through the chute and there was still some dino juice left in the tank. Suspension travel at both ends has been bumped up to 150 mm. You get a larger 90 inch front wheel, it rolls on block pattern MRF Nylo Grip Curve Rubber at the front and Nylo Grip Revs X at the rear. And it has a larger front disc. Plus, Triumph has been spot. It has sharpened the steering but increased the trail so as to reduce steering effort. The ground clearance has shot up. How has that affected its handling? The most stellar part about this bike is the way it handles. It isn't sharp, but rather composed. Once you get the hang of it, it is precise and controlled, allowing you to carry some serious cornering lean angles, almost to the point that I ended up scraping the foot peg feelers. And that is phenomenal, considering the amount of front end feel that you get, despite this bike running a larger 19 inch front wheel. Now the only similar front end feel experience with a 19 inch front wheel that we've got is from the Suzuki V-Strom. And similarly here, the front end is a little vague at first, but you got to trust the bike to do its job. And since it's a scrambler, pulling off crazy wheelies or goon riding is a rather joyful and rewarding riding experience. What remains a letdown though are the brakes. Now, I thought that thanks to the larger 320mm rotor, the braking on the Scrambler would definitely be better than the speed. But in fact, it is a bit more subdued. The bite is less and you have to dial in a lot more braking force to bring this bike to a rapid halt. And there is a lot of brake fade within 20 minutes of hard riding. And that sort of leaves you a little disheartened as you can't ride this bike hard and fast to its full potential. Thankfully, ABS calibration is on point and doesn't give you any scares whatsoever. One of the reasons why the Scrambler is a great handler is because of the taut suspension setup. You just feel it to have a sharper edge over smaller imperfections. But since it's a scrambler, you can just stand up on the pegs and ride the pumps out nicely. Speaking of which... And when you do take it off tarmac, you see that this intentful stance is equally rewarding when you are tackling the tricky terrain. And Triumph has made sure that this remains a scrambler and not an adventure motorcycle. What I mean by that is that it doesn't feel rather bulky or top heavy in that sense. It feels fairly neutral, it feels very planted and it can take on any sort of small rocks and obstacles in its path very well. But you can't expect it to go hardcore trail bashing like you would on say an X-Pulse or a X-Pulse Pro because then you start to notice the limitations of this format or rather this motorcycle because the 19 inch front wheel, the wider tires just start to deflect away. But if you want a bike that's definitely meant to go just mucking around, this does a fantastic job. You have switchable traction control and switchable ABS at your disposal increasing its dirt riding capabilities. The latter aid certainly does come in handy when you want to stay in firm control of the bike through a rough spot by stamping on the rear brake or even just to hoon around. The feature set on the Scrambler remains the same as the Speed. Hence, there is no change to the semi-digital console besides the additional menu option for the switchable ABS. It is still easy to navigate and read on the fly with the taco still making it tricky to figure out the exact revs on the go. The USB-C port continues to be neatly positioned, making it easy to charge devices while riding. Triumph and Bajaj, 
well they have certainly knocked it out of the park once again with the scrambler 400x and this bike turns out to be an even harder hitter than what i'd previously imagined this is definitely the india worthy bike in the chakan hinkley camp and it is definitely something that you should consider if you want a do it all motorcycle something that is great to take you to remote places is good out on the highway and can also be fun to commute in the city and the sweet asking price of rupees 2.63 lakh is just the dessert on top of this sumptuous motorcycle what also remains to be seen is just how easy is it to live with on a daily basis plus what the service and maintenance costs are going to be for this bike because even though it might have a 16000 km service interval which is definitely the highest in its class how well does it pan out given the indian conditions well that's it from us what do you like to know about the scrambler 400x we'll cover that in our road test video do let me know those questions in the comments below don't forget to like and share this video subscribe to our channel hit the bell notification icon and i shall see you soon